Hi, Colin. Um, I just wonder where where you're at in terms of your your thoughts heading into this week after after last week in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, I have a lot to work on. Um, spent all afternoon yesterday working. It was probably the hardest, longest I've worked in a while um, pre-tournament, like on a Monday. Um, but it's good. Sometimes you need to ha hit that kind of reset button and, and really figure out and, and dive deep. I had my agent, my caddy, and we were just literally sitting on the range for hours just trying to figure out what to do. And um, we know what's not working. It's just trying to get back to my old swing, right, and trying to get back to, to what I know I can do. Um, so, you know, I still have a couple things I got to work out and, and feel, um, but I'm in a much better position, you know, right now, at least if I had to go play tomorrow or right now uh, versus where I was last week. Were the issues compounded by how windy it was in, in, in Abu Dhabi? Because that can, can knock you off, can't it? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't help. Um, that's how you kind of prep. And, you know, I, I think I heard Phil talk about, you know, starting the year in Hawaii, right? You always prepare for really windy and you, you're going to be off balance. And I know the past couple of years when I've played out there, um, you almost have to come back home and reset. This year it wasn't windy in Hawaii, so I felt fine. Come out here, blowing in Abu Dhabi last week. And, um, sometimes you just have to find the center again. And, you know, it's just, it happens. Um, thankfully, I was still able to learn a lot from it and show up this week with a, you know, fresh mind and ready to go. You famously found the reset button to fantastic effect in July last year after yeah. the Scottish Open. Uh, can we draw any parallels potentially this week? Yeah, um, you know, the Scottish was weird because I, I felt like everything was actually really good. I had just blamed it on my clubs, which normally it's, it's, not, it's not the case, right? But I, I was thinking, you know, I, I made my iron switch. I made a little putter switch. Um, so there are certain things there that, you know, the game felt good. Last week, the game didn't feel good. I, di I didn't know where the golf ball was going, um, and I had to kind of figure that out. So, look, it, yesterday was, was much needed, and I feel a lot better where I am uh, heading into this Thursday. Thanks, Ian. Were there any other questions from the floor here? Joy, do you want to pop over? Colin, is, the, is there a mental process that you have where you try to forget not just one shot, but, but a tournament like that, what you had last week? Uh, yeah, you just forget about it. Like, it's as simple as that, really. You know, th there's not like a, I need to go sit in my bed or I need to go sit, stare at a wall and like try and figure out what to do. It's just kind of in my nature of like, I want to get better, right? And I'm trying to figure out what I did poorly last week and really try and work to get better this week. And um, it's just that grind, right? Like at the end of the season last year, I, you, you take a month off and you find that love and passion, that itch to get back, right? And that's what happens is when you have a bad week like that, you show up at a week like this, just wanting to get better, making sure I don't do the mistakes I did last week, show up here and, and play the way I know I can play. And, um, it's just about remembering things I've done well in the past. Um, and, you know, it's as simple as really forgetting about what happened. I, I can't do anything about what happened last week. It happened. I played bad. I learned from it. Um, but last year, you know, I have memories out here that, you know, I, I know I didn't play well. I know I didn't putt well. And you just try and figure it out and play the best you can. I, I was going to come to last year because you played over here and, and you had your issues with jet lag and other things. But but this, th this year, you know the golf course and you – don't have jet lag, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, by yeah. now. So what are your thoughts for this week? Look, um, after last week, obviously, I had, like we talked about, I have things I need to work on. I'll get that done by Thursday, and I'll be ready. Um, but it's just going out and playing the golf course like I, like I know I can. Um, stick to my strengths. Really, you know, what happened last week was I, I wasn't really in my head. I wasn't playing to my strengths. Obviously, I had no clue where the ball was going, which makes it a lot harder. But out here, like like you said, I know the golf course. I know where I need to hit it. Um, so at that point, it's just going out and playing golf, executing the shots I know, talk to my caddy like we, we do all the time when we're playing really well, and just stick to the same process. Colin, can I ask you a question? You've talked about love and passion. You talked about playing over in Hawaii. How can you? Where would you rather play? Would you rather play a tournament with 34 under par wins or one night last week <laughs> only 11 under par wins? Uh, doesn't really matter where unless I'm – as long as I'm shooting the 34 or 11 under. Um, I, I think, you know, what we see throughout the entire year, you see a balance of both. It's fun to shoot 34 under sometimes. Um, I think if I had to shoot 34 under every single week, I'd get kind of sick of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of it has to do with conditions. You know, like we wouldn't have shot 34 under par at Kapalua if, it, if the winds were up. Last week, 11 under, right, is that 11 under would not have won yeah. if we didn't have – 30, 40 mile per hour gusts on Friday. 
Um, so it is all, it's all based on conditions. Some courses, yes, are easier than others. Yeah. But if we all, if we, if we played in a dome with 15 to 20 mile per hour winds every week, we would, we would never see 30 under par. Yeah. Um, so that's, it's kind of how it is. So you see a balance of it all. I understand what you say about the conditions, but, but there's any, any need, say, for a knee-jerk reaction to sort of change courses when 34 under par wins, and even, even though Mike and Patrick won the tournament? <laughs> you know, it's, it's more, it's, it's not making, look, the answer is not making courses longer yeah. just so we can have five irons in the greens. It's, if the greens are soft, if there's no wind, we can fire at any pin from any distance. Like, the scores are going to be low. It's more about making us play different shots, hit it out to the right, draw it, fade it. I think the creativity of golf sometimes on some golf courses, it allows players to just bomb it, right? And that's the difference of, of making a tough course versus an easier course of, of having a lot of birdies is you see some courses that we have, you know, on the PJ Tour, because I know the course is a lot better, is that there's some shorter courses, but 15 under wins because you have to take irons off the tee. You have to draw it around trees. You can't hit it over certain areas. And um, it goes back to course setup. Okay, we're going to go to uh, Fatia on the line. Fatia, if you want to unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Um, I would like to ask you uh, about any change of your golf equipment and if this hard work uh, preparation due to these changes. Yeah, um, this week, actually, I haven't changed anything. Um, it's been the same setup all throughout this short uh, month so far in January in 2022. Um, you know, I've I actually, oh, now, now that you have me thinking, I, I did change my driver. I made it actually a little more upright um, than what it was in Hawaii at the start of the year. I'm finding center of the face a lot more, um, which is a lot nicer. I can set it up, hit it right in the middle, and that, obviously that helps the confidence to when you know you can put it in the fairway. Um, but other than that, setup-wise, I'm um, leaving everything uh, as is pretty much. Thank you. Thank you. Rory was saying last week that he was relieved to have made the cut because the two uh, extra rounds, c competitive rounds with a card, were invaluable. You looked as if you were convinced you were going to miss the cut. We, would you have rather draw a line under it and go and work, or were the t extra two rounds g valuable for you? Uh, well, yeah, I did pack my bags thinking I was going to miss the cut. Um, I hate missing cuts, so so absolutely, I, I did not want to miss the cut. Like I never do. Um, but it got us thinking, right? Uh, Saturday morning when I was prepping for and uh, warming up for our round, like my caddy and I, we started thinking about what I needed to do. We started taking videos. I started looking at my swing. Um, so it just helped the process get to where we are now. And what I did, I ended up doing yesterday when I had a full practice session. Um, yeah, would it have been nice just say to have a more, more just say I had a week off and, and work on it? Yeah. But I'm not trying to miss cuts just so I can go practice. You know, you, you do learn a lot when you're out on the golf course. Um, even when you play poorly, like you still learn a lot about yourself. And it just reminds me more about what I, well, last week, what I shouldn't do um, for, you know, the future. Colin, you talk about that work ethic. Has that always been in your nature? And, and can you reflect on a time early in your career where that really helped you maybe turn the corner? The what? Yeah, the work, yeah. The work, work ethic, oh, the, the work yeah. ethic, yeah. Um, no, I mean, it, look, it, it's, it all comes from inside, right? Like my self-belief of trying to get better, trying to get to number one in the world, trying to beat everyone out here. Um, so it's never like, oh, I need to push myself because I, you know, I played poorly. It's because I, I want to come out and play the best and, and possibly win the tournament. Um, so when you have weeks like that, right, when you have bad weeks, you have to forget, but you also have to remember that it's going to happen. You're not always going to play amazing. Um, but you try and have those bottoms not be as low as, you know, missing cuts or finishing at the bottom of the leaderboard or whatever it may be. Um, so they're all learning experiences, right? Last week was a, was a big learning experience. And it's just a lot of things didn't go right. Nothing was happening. I had no luck, nothing. And um, sometimes it's that way. Uh, Colin, uh, the young Sam Bennett from Texas is playing here this week as an amateur. What sort of advice sort of would you advice. give him for playing at this level? Yeah, um, look, uh, seems like, oh, actually seems like a long time ago now. Yeah, I know it was not long that long ago, but it does feel like a long time. Um, well, I, I think when you're an amateur and you're playing in professional events, when you're playing in a Rolex Series event, you're playing in a big worldwide event, um, it's just about learning and getting comfortable in the situation, right? I think you're going to see he's going to see players out here that he's probably never played against. He's going to see names that he's seen for a long, long time. 
and it's just about getting comfortable in this situation, right? I assume he's going to want to turn pro. You know, he's, he's going to turn pro soon. And the biggest thing to adapt and get what I think to get to the tour, to get to wherever you want to be as quickly as possible is to be comfortable in the situation. And when you're put in this tournament setting as an amateur, you're not comfortable. Like, it's, it's something you've never seen. So getting a rep in, like, once or twice or however many you can get is, is huge um, for the future. So it's, it's just embracing, you know, what's going on around. Sorry to follow up. Is, is there one aspect of the game that he should pay particular attention to for the guys that he's playing with? No, I mean, uh, he's going to notice some guys do this really well, some guys do that. And uh, the biggest thing is sticking to what he does well. You know, don't change your game plan. You hear that from every guy out there. You hear that from every pro telling any amateur turning pro stick to who you are stick to what you do and it's it's hard it is really hard to do that because you see so many guys out here you want to do this you want to do that you have a bunch of clubs out here you want to try this you want to try that and um, you really have to be focused on what you want to achieve Colin uh, this question might put you in a bit of a spot because I know you are sponsored by uh, Omega but I just wanted to ask you 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 were here last year and you are here this year. There's a lot of change on the golf course uh, regarding the infrastructure and things like that. And you, I, I, I was walking with you when you played the round with uh, Chris uh, at, at yeah, Tiger's Bali. event. Yep. Uh, can you just tell us what what he brings to the table as a new sponsor to this tournament, and and what kind of a personality he is? Yeah. With all your talks. Yeah. Look, I think um, title sponsors are huge for tournaments, right? And what he's done this year, I, I think. He has got, Chris himself, right, has gotten involved in the game of golf, not just from an outsider's perspective of, you know, I want to sponsor the tournament, but he wants to make it the best. He wants to make it a great event for all of us, not just the players, but the caddies, the fans, the media, like everyone. And it's cool to see that, to see a title sponsor get that invested into learning what's great about certain events, what he thinks could do better at other events. And he's, you know, you see him at a lot of events, like we saw him in the Bahamas, right? I was playing with him and, you know, you pick his brain and he's telling me, you know, okay, I learned this from this year. I learned this from this tournament. And he just wants to make the event, the event as great as possible. I mean, you can see the, the grandstands here, you know, we're surrounded on the ninth green here at the media, nine, 18, the, the stands are amazing, right? And I think it's that's part of the experience for fans and what we do as professional golfers. It's it's entertainment. People want to see shots. They want to be in a great spot. And, and that's what he's providing. So uh, it's, it's, it's awesome to see what he's doing. 